to just login's uh, webinar with zero today on how to manage payroll expenses and money and closing remotely. I uh, hope everyone's doing well today. Um, if there is, hope you guys can hear me well. If there's any problem with our audio or stuff, can you please raise it up to the chat uh, box? Uh, just to make sure that we got audio working. Um, if, if not, if everything's working fine, then I will continue, I'll uh, start the webinar for today. Okay, um, thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon for our weekly Just Login webinars during especially um, during this COVID-19 situation. Uh, thanks for everybody taking the time out to do uh, join us for one hour today. Today I have the privilege of inviting a guest uh, presenter, Christian Antonio uh, from Zero. So, Christian, he's actually a strategy partnerships manager at Zero. Christian, say hi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's good to see you guys today online for this webinar. Okay. So. Yeah, so for, for, for the beginning, so uh, Christian will join us after my presentation. Uh, so what I'll do next is maybe I'll start off the presentation that I have prepared for everybody today. So before I begin, um, I'd like to have um, everybody just run through a little poll that you might get on your screen. Are you already using Just Login and or Zero for your finance operations, right? So of course, Just Login is not a finance software, but most of you might be using us for payroll related matters or expense claims. So if you are already a customer of ours, please feel free to um, give us some feedback. The reason we're asking this question is to get a sense of the audience and to understand maybe certain parts of the speech we can kind of cater to your uh, setup. Okay. <clears throat> I should have the answer shortly. Thank you. So I see that uh, 21% of the audience today, it's about, it's actually just logging customer. We got 15% of it from zero and 17% that's using both zero and just login. So almost half the audience are using a separate digital, digital solutions or not using any digital solutions at all. So thank you, thank you. Just give a sense of what um, your interest in this uh, webinar. So let's talk, uh, talk about the obvious, right? I mean, this uh, coronavirus uh, shutdown has kind of set everybody up for uh, you know, a very interesting time. Never before in our work history, at least my work life, I've seen the whole world pretty much shut down exactly the same time. So what, one of the challenges we've seen in almost our customers is that a lot of them have to readjust to this new setup um, and it's doing two things one of it, one of it is that it's shaking out the fundamental core of how we work uh, a lot of changes have to be made adjusted for some companies the transition was very easy right a lot of things was already done virtually especially a lot of startups were more IT savvy but there's a lot of, I would say a bulk of the businesses out there are still probably not prepared for this kind of movement where suddenly business are done almost 80%, 90% online, or a lot of things has to be done remotely. People are not used to this setup. So today, I think based on our experience and what we've seen with our customers, hopefully we can share with you some ideas that you can bring back to look into your own organization. So to begin with, I mean, this article came from Malaysia, how a lot of governments view it, not just in Singapore, how a lot of governments view it is that um, a lot of, they still uh, view finance and HR uh, essential. It means they are allowed to work, uh, go back to office, despite the fact that everyone else is working from home. Now, this is a very interesting insight, right? You think about it, almost there's many departments within the company, but 
essentially only these two departments are given special privileges to go back to work to deal with things like payroll, the things like expenses and finance and invoices and check. So what's happening here is it actually shows us that a lot of the businesses out in the market out in, the world, uh, in the world right now, a lot of things are already automated. A lot of it digitized can be done remotely, but the finance and HR is still a case where it's still pretty much lagged in the industry. Um, I still lag it in the industry in terms of being able to cope with this work from home situation or do remote working experience. So let's have a look into these challenges that this finance team have generally when they deal with this new work from home arrangement. One of it is that what we realize is a lot of finance team, even within just log in, within I would say a lot of companies that we have seen, huge MNCs have seen, everything is digitized. But the only thing is that finance teams are still very paper-based. Um, in, in our organization, for example, all the files that's in this, uh, is, is that's, all the cabinets are filled with finance-related papers, like old contracts, old invoices, uh, etc. They're all dealt with mostly, finance is still mostly very paper-centric. And there's also a, a lot of company policies are still very, you know, in-person uh, compliance, you know, it, it still needs to be uh, in-person kind of set up. So what I mean is that, um, for example, you know, a lot of companies still deal with uh, um, everything else digital. The only thing that's not digital is checks, right? You know, they're still signing off payments through checks or they're still signing off contracts through physical paper and stuff. So there's, a re there's the need for people to physically appear. You notice that even banks, a lot of banks, uh, older banks or some non-digital banks, they still require to be in person to sign off certain documents in the branch to get certain things done. So this is a, a challenge for finance because finance touches a lot on these things. The other thing that uh, tends to uh, look at is a lot, a lot of uh, finance processes are still very manual based. That means, you know, uh, I still see payment vouchers being clipped onto invoices. They receive invoices via paper. They have to clip them on. They have to get approval. They get signatures. Finance file them up for auditors to see. But what we realize is that all these actually, there's a lot of development in the market for these processes to be already digital and uh, automated. I think our partner Zero will be able to share a little bit more on that aspect. So let's take a look at the first challenge. Uh, finance management is still very paper centric. Now, <laughs> for, for information's sake, right? I mean, dealing with paper is not necessarily the safest thing as well. Dealing with physical money is not the safest thing. In fact, China is actually sterilizing all the cash <laughs> just to prevent coronavirus from spreading. I mean, and you think about a lot of uh, scientists uh, have already, you know, done a lot of research on papers, a lot of studies out there show that, you know, the dirtiest paper that you actually handle on a day-to-day -day basis is actually money. Uh, because it can be spread to so many people, sneeze at, uh, set on, uh, brought to, to, uh, to, to toilets and stuff. So if you think about it, the paper money that you see today that's still very extremely valuable is extremely dirty. So this is also something you want to think about when you think about this, especially this kind of COVID pandemic situation, uh, how to reduce the amount of interactions you have with physical money. Now, some of the problems that you face, especially during COVID, is that physical documents and files is the main thing that limits the reason why you cannot have your finance team working from home. All right, am I, uh, I believe that statement is quite valid if uh, the audience can attest to that. A lot of it is still paper-based. You receive a good, it's still a paper invoice that you sign off or et cetera, or, or delivery orders are still paper-centric. Uh, a lot of things are still essentially paper. And the, the best part about it is that companies still have to file this paper in, store it somewhere, and, and the amount of uh, cabinets need to fill up just to keep all those host historical records of seven years, is already, it causes, takes up a lot of real estate. And like cash, you know, paper documents uh, continue to carry bacteria and viruses that, you know, you can easily just spread it around. Um, lastly, storage is also very expensive. So, Whereas a digital, a more new age, high tech uh, company setup, you will see a couple of guys 
uh, sitting around with a laptop and dealing with uh, most of the people digitally. But what we see is that with all the files that you build, you build cabinets for it, you build storage space where you buy ring files for it, you file it, and on top of that, you just spend time searching and managing the paper. So that's a lot of work. And you think about it, that's why it's really expensive. An organization should look into how to resolve this, how to bring this cost down. If you, if you look at it, most of you don't look at it that way, but uh, if you really look deep enough, you realize that a lot of paperwork is had to do with finance team. Now the, I mean, I kind of encourage uh, <clears throat> A lot of companies probably looked at in the past, which failed miserably, is that they look at scanning solutions and things like that. But I think that what's valuable in that uh, in that setup is that it's the data inside uh, those finance documents that needs to be translated into digital format. It's not so much the paper itself. So over the last few years, there's a lot of developments, especially in the AI space, to look into optical, uh, very smarter ways of doing OCRs. For example, in Just Login, we recently launched a mobile app that allows you to do scanning of your receipts, um, as well as uh, automatically picking up the right um, information from the receipts and put it into an expense report. Zero has a similar product that allows you now to scan all the invoices that come in, and it automatically populates the right that data field in zero itself. So I believe these are all very exciting development that uh, companies should look into to see how they can leverage on all during this COVID situation, how to leverage all this to transform their business. So a quick overview of just expense, for example, for us is that it's now it's all AI powered. That means all you need to do is to take a picture of it. It will capture the, uh, the number, it will actually be an AI engine uh, in the back end, looking at the receipt and looking at the line item in the receipt and, find, and finding out what's the uh, biggest, uh, what's the most likely number there is on the receipt that's, that is useful, that is needed to be entered into your expense report. And this is automatically populated, all the relevant fields as you capture who the vendor is, which restaurants you visit, it's all automatically populated. There's no need to be, uh, there's no, no manual intervention. You do not need to retype any information. A lot of this can now be captured through AI and be populated into a service like ours. Okay. And this done can be, on top of that, the whole process, the whole expense management process can actually be done uh, through, through the mobile app. You know, even approving, scanning from a scanning, submitting to approving, it's all done through the mobile app. Nowadays, companies are moving towards the mobile first, employee first experience. And I believe there will be solutions out there for almost all aspects of your finance, uh, for your finance team to look at, to evaluate, to see if it fits your purpose. Now, the benefits of a paperless solution is that you do not need physical storage space, all right? A lot of them can be stored in the cloud. Um, you don't need to build cabinets. And you, if you have done any renovation at home before or an office before, you understand that Building up a cabinet is actually quite expensive. All the ID space, all the trying to fit the right space just to keep the files, is it worth it? I, I, I think it's worth to rethink that problem and maybe uh, evaluate if it's a better way to uh, put it digitally. So you don't need to build up those face space. You can rent a small office and still have a lot of space to move around. That's, and during this COVID situation, um, you will notice Is that it's even like to refer some old contracts, or old files, or old uh, or file some new papers, or even to just to receive checks or banking the checks, all these paper base. So with this, you do not need to bring in all those files to work, and therefore it's more mobile. Your finance team can be working from home without even having to refer to those documents physically. And with now a lot of search uh, features built into all the operating systems, all your mobile devices, all the file system like Dropbox and stuff, searching documents is actually even easier. Um, it just requires to label the product properly, label the document properly. You can search the document really, really quickly. So this has to do with a lot of um, you know, internal business process, best practices that you might want to implement down the road. The other two second challenge that we see a lot of finance teams having is very outdated in-person compliance, right? 
So as I mentioned before, the problem with in-person compliance policy is that it's restricted to everyone's availability to be at the predetermined time and place. Think about it, right? If you have, uh, you, need, you need a boss, uh, you need your manager or your CEO to sign off or your CFO to sign off a check, for example. In this kind of situation, you need to first make sure that your CFO or CEO is in the office. You have to check at the right moment to present to him for signature. Or you have need to predetermine what the time is the best time to submit this document. Or you can leave it at his desk. But however, the individual during a normal business time is traveling, uh, they will not be able to get to that document. Therefore, the payments will be delayed, be, uh, will be delayed, delayed and so forth. So that requires the person to be there. And if you think about this cost incurred, there's a lot of this hidden cost incurred that you do not see. Being physically there, signing documents, uh, whereas you will slow down the pace of your business as well because you only can do certain things at a different time. We've called customers uh, during this kind of time, they will always have all sorts of uh, interesting, uh, interesting feedback. Like manager's not around to sign this paper. My manager's not around to do that. We're gonna sign this document. We're gonna sign that only after the COVID or we go back to off, we wait for next Friday before it goes to the office. So all this could be eliminate, eliminated if you have already a digital uh, solution in place. It significantly reduces productivity because all these um, physical tagging, you know, uh, looking for the person, it can be reduced immediately, right? You, will, you can use that time to work on other areas or the pro other projects that you might have. And it's also expensive if you think about it, because just for this trip, you need to spend uh, time, travel time to and fro, that's at least an hour um, to do certain things. So these time costs has a lot, has also need to be factored in when you look at all these small little uh, physical limitations that you have to do with paperwork uh, or in-person compliance. So think about it, accumulative over a couple of, months or years that is easily uh, a quite significant amount of uh, m money that it will be wasted just by coordinate, coordinating among yourselves to get to a place to do certain things because it's simply because it's in paper now so there's a lot of development in the market over the last two years um that pretty much lit is working at this problem, right? So I think, for, in fact, for the last 10 years, digital signatures are already in place. Uh, there's a uh, hello sign in the market that we use, like DocuSign, which is a very popular solution. They're actually very re well recognized industry standard electronic signatures systems. And legal documents are actually uh, recognized as well that it's valid. So if you sign a contract on it, it's actually valid. If you sign a document sign or a license hollow hollow sign, they have, because they have all the audit trail, they have all the signatories, they capture all the IP addresses and why you, who's accessing the document is really on the service on, and these are recognized in industry and it's recognized by law. Um, so I think prior to this, we have asked some audience about what kind of questions, you know what, this, uh, what we found, if we did the research for law regulations, all these document electronic signatures are actually valid and can be used in a lot of our cases. Other things to look at as developments, for example, our SingPass, which allows you to authenticate whether yourself. So we are, we built our solution. If you're logged into just login app, you realize that on the online you actually can use SingPass to log in. This will authenticate you. So there's no need for you to verify again in person. So the, the point is to leverage all these information so that you do not need to, uh, you can save you down on this, um, look at reducing costs. So other things to look at here is that even employees on a day-to-day -day basis, you need to make sure they're at a certain location at a certain time. This doesn't then require them to sign off physical paper. Taking an electronic photo of them, uh, clocking in through a mobile app is also does the same thing because it verifies the identity. And we have AI servers, uh, AI uh, engine at the back that recognizes the face to authenticate the identity of the person for you when you clock in. So all these development in place is, work, is up to the finance team or up to the companies in general to evaluate if it makes sense for the company. The validity of e-signatures, there are already laws in place to confirm 
that electronic communications uh, uh, apply to all commercial transactions. So um, you can look at some of the acts that have been enacted over the last few years. Singapore, that's one. Electronic, uh, in Malaysia, there's another one. Hong Kong is another one as well. So you look at all these at 2010, a lot of regulations are already in place to deal with electronic signatures. So if you're already not, if you're already still depending on the facts or a physical paper signature or sending physical document online, especially when it comes to your company policy to your customers, it's time to reconsider using one of these. So case in point, recently I was dealing with some uh, um, uh, older Malaysian companies and they, uh, they've, or some other companies, they request me to physically print it out, sign it and send it back DHL back. It costs more than the subscription licenses of all these electronic signature companies. Uh, company. So I, I think if you're signing a lot of documents, if you need a lot of documents physically in, in paper, like, you know what, it's time to relook into that and archive it. In fact, I've also called up the IRAs, IRAS, uh, and they have confirmed as well, there's no need for you to keep physical copies of your receipts and invoice. You can actually, it's recognized, even with the tax authorities, that you, um, that you can keep digital copy as long as it's valid. So there you go. Uh, you can go ahead and throw away your paper if, uh, if, you, if you want. So some of the areas that you need to consider when it comes to um, payroll, uh, you know, business or BCP planning is that these are the things, the seven, seven factors, right? Whether the IT infrastructure to be in place, okay? Uh, whether you're looking at uh, who's supposed to be doing it, you look at staff availability, you know, whether the banks are connected to your system, whether you support your, your system um, digitally, right? and your team is working from home, and a physical process, and as well as access to data, which is very important, right? You need to have employee data at hand. If you're still paper and Excel-based, then that's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be a challenge for you because then your files will be all over the place. You cannot coordinate, collaborate properly. So some of the questions you might wanna ask is say, gyro payments already pre-approved for the banks, right? Get that approved, get that going. Uh, do you have the bank accounts of employees? That's the least you could do, rather than or pay now with employees, right? Uh, have you already set up for e-submission for CPF and RIS? These are all simple things that can be done, and next thing you know is that you can start e-submitting a lot of all this paperwork. So, Um, now, the benefits of having a cloud-based compliance policy is that is you'll be able to get all the updates very, very quickly, right? So if any signatures will to be sent out for any paperwork that need to be sent out for documents to be signed, counter sign back, you know, it's just a click of a button. They can do it anytime as some access to your emails, to their mobile phones, and et cetera. They can sign those documents. You don't need to wait for them to courier back documents and so forth. So any... Um, uh, any of these uh, 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 any of these tasks will be much faster. Any updates will be quicker as well. You can implement it immediately, especially as cloud-based subscription nowadays. You're able to do it anywhere, all right? Um, you can do it anytime. And the best thing is that you will be able to monitor the performance and much faster feedback. If there's a problem with the contract, if there's a problem, you at least you know that you've sent across a document or needs to be signed off very quickly. You need to verify the identity very quickly. You'll be able to see this rather than wait for them to send a letter back. There's a two weeks delay in your order or two weeks delay in your processes, which you could at least speed up your business by just changing that simple policy. Now, the challenge number three is that what we see is that a lot of HR uh, finance system or HR uh, departments, finance teams or finance, HR teams are still very manual based, all right? Um, one of the, I mean, you should know by now, the special problem manual based is very prone to errors. Um, if you're calculating CPF manually right now, you realize that we've seen a lot of cases where customers come aboard, they've been calculating CPF wrongly, they've been filing taxes wrongly, 
and they got them some them got themselves in trouble because uh, MOM got into the picture so we're asking it's like oh why is this person not paid correctly you don't have the proof for that and so forth so these will cause unnecessary stress and uh, unnecessary uh, backtracking for your organization that's easily could be easily solved by having a very robust um, digital or cloud-based system it generates a lot of paper wastage I mean now it's a uh, other other than you can save the planet that way right and it's also the same thing costly storage of documents right so I think the main thing here I would like to drive across is that if your company has not looked at cloud-based solutions in the past, I think it's more, uh, it's a time to consider seriously to get yourself into a cloud base because you probably be the, um, the remaining few companies in this, uh, remaining, remaining few companies that has not looked at cloud-based solutions because everyone else is, most of, most of the um, newer companies are really pretty much all on a cloud-based solution. Nobody looks, nowadays solutions are no longer bought for on-premise. Very rarely you hear that, uh, especially for new solutions because cloud-based solutions are just simpler, uh, easier to deploy and the ROI is a lot easier to get back. And on top of that, it's also based on variable costs. Most of these cloud-based solutions we've seen are all var variable costs. That means as your business scales up, you pay a bit more, but business scales down, you adjust the price accordingly. So in times like this, when the COVID situation, it benefits companies who are already on a subscription model because you can adjust your business much faster than not, right? Um, there's also no maintenance. So most of the time, there's very minimal maintenance um, because the system is, is not hosted on your end. You will find that uh, you can save on an IT person or do, you don't have to worry about whether you you're have an IT manager in your office itself. Now, for us, we of course suggest a HR cloud-based payroll, payroll system because a lot of the solutions that you see out, a lot of things now in HR is actually can be cloud-based. We have um, the whole from payroll to leave management to time and attendance. There's almost very little. We have uh, pretty much over the last 20 years of development, put it all in the cloud and the companies today, uh, 2,000 companies of ours, our customers of ours are really realizing this value because it, it, it allows them to scale their business very, very quickly, scale their HR very, very quickly, and to uh, deal with especially this kind of market changes rapidly as well. I mean, just to give a sample of uh, uh, just logging cloud-based solutions, like is everything that is run through a browser? Uh, you can generate, for example, your C C uh, CPF files on the system. Okay, if your HR system is not able to do that, um, do reconsider because these can be electronically submitted to your CPF itself. This is another, um, that is uh, uh, one way to go digital because a lot of these government portals, especially in Singapore already has allow you to do an e-submission. So you do not need to file in one at a time, generate a file from a system like ours and you can submit it as one batch file. What takes you maybe two hours to build, two hours to submit, maybe it could be done in like five seconds. Banks as well, a lot of banks now support the e-file submission process, so we can generate the necessary bank files for you, and you can also submit that into your bank's portal. For and tax submission, same thing, we have done a backend integration to the government uh, the IRAS and you can submit electronically from our system directly IRAS without any bank file transfer. So this will significantly reduce the number of errors they might face during paper or submitting, uh, you know, through, through manually, through entering on websites. A lot of this system now already catered for this kind of setup and saves you a significant amount of time. Lastly, when it comes to employee as well, because it's all paper based, it's all digital based, mobile based. Now you do not need to send physical pay slips. All pay slips can be digitized. You can view your pay slip, check historical pay slips, download the pay slips. So especially when banks need the historical records, they do not need to bother your old previous HR to say, hey, can you print me my old uh, pay slips because I've lost all my new ones. All right, I'm applying for a bank loan. You can just go into the mobile app, click on it and download that relevant uh, pay slip that they need. 
and just to spot to to make things uh, easier for everybody in in general when it comes to integration just like again we have integrated in zero so a lot of the payroll information if you need it uh, you will need it on your PL can be in, is immediately integrated to zero and it's mapped according based on your account in zero itself so this is just a sample and the final amount will appear in zero in the relevant line items so I think the challenges everyone be thinking is what's next, right? What, how do you deal with this? If you want to make a change, I've seen I talk to a lot of bosses, a lot of managers, a lot of entrepreneurs. What they tell us is that they're using this opportunity, this downtime when business is slower, or when they have a bit more time to think about their business. Um, they, they're now evaluating how to digitize their solution. I mean, this is my some of my personal suggestions to look at, first of all, is to start small, right? I, I wouldn't recommend immediately starting, you've never, you have not digitized a lot of your business by looking at it doing now. Um, I'm suggesting that you look at starting as a very simple, small project. Or maybe first, in my, for example, in some cases, you can try doing things like implement a paper band. And you will see which department is making the most noise, and those are the ones that probably needs uh, uh, needs the most work in terms of digitizing. So, for example, when we implement our own internal paper bank, uh, no one made a noise uh, except for the finance team, right? Uh, the uh, the sales team was everything; it was digitized. Signature was done digitally. Uh, the the tech team was all in digital format already. The only thing that was making a lot of noise was our finance team because they have too much paper based workflow. Um, the other thing that's important is make sure you get all the management buy in. I mean, a lot of these IT projects tend to fail if managers do not uh, buy into the idea. They still. So the only way to do that is start small so that you can realize, you can measure the ROI. And from these small investments, these small projects that you do on these cloud systems, you'll be able to measure the ROI much rapidly. And you will see how effectively just changing a small thing into a cloud and how much savings it has. I mean, for us, a very simple thing, just changing signatures from um, physical signatures to chase order forms to a digital signature format just by doing that itself, it saves us um, easily uh, it, it speed up the velocity of the business that we close. Easily 10 to 20% of speeding up velocity of customers because customers will sign out of a contract much faster. And the last thing to look at is that when you implement a system, you have to rethink your process, unfortunately, right? Your old process on it is very manual based, paper based. We have a new process with new system in place, you have to think about it, how will you change? Because some process, when it's digitalized, it's actually redundant. Uh, you might not need uh, uh, the same process. So you have to rethink those uh, uh, processes as well. All right, so as you know, this is the um, Director General for uh, World Health WHO. You know what, COVID-19 will eventually recede, but businesses will not be the same after this. I think a lot of companies, even our company itself, will realize that we're actually more prepared for this work from home arrangement than we, than we initially think, because we have been working from home, everyone's been working from home for the last two months, we have not missed a big beat. There's rarely any need for us to go physically in the office, and then, uh, business is still pretty much effective. So I think the, the, the point is, this what well, we find that that works for us because most of our solutions really cloud based, it's really digitalized, and we can move rapidly when this kind of changes. It allows to scale the business as well rapidly. So do think about it because um, digitizing finance departments is not an easy task. But I will say that it's always it's good to start somewhere, and it's the best way to start it. I would say start small. So with this. Um, Thank you uh, for my portion, uh, staying for my portion of the time. I'll have, I'll hand over to my next speaker, Christian, who will, will have more to share about what Zero thinks about this uh, situation. Christian, over to you. Well, thank you so much, Johan, for a very informative sessions. Uh, so, so, 
So, hi, everybody. So just to uh, give a little bit of introduction, my name is Chris. So I work with Zero uh, on the strategic partnerships. Uh, and uh, I work with uh, part awesome partners like uh, Just Login and Show How uh, in terms of like bringing uh, integrations as well as join uh, value to our customers. And uh, before, before this, I was mainly working with many of our accounting and bookkeeping uh, our partners across Asia in terms of using Zero and basically helping them get uh, on board with cloud solutions. So, all right. So today uh, I'm going to be covering some topics uh, or uh, mostly focus on Zero as well on how can we help enable remote work capability for companies uh, across Asia through technologies itself. So of course, as everybody know, we are in this situation because of COVID. So this is some of the interesting framework that I've uh, gathered when I read a report from McKinsey about uh, what the standardized framework on how businesses actually get through this crisis together. So for the first two is basically being uh, resolved and being resilient. So this is about addressing the most immediate challenges on the cash flow. How do you stay operational? And basically, hopefully by this stage, majority of you guys, majority of the business would have at least gone through this resolve and resilient phase. Uh, and I think the most importantly, as we move towards the next step of this, uh, as in Singapore, we are uh, going towards the end of the second breaker, towards the end of the month. I think it's really important how can we uh, plan the business to return uh, safely and according to the local regulations as well. So technologies play a big part in terms of reimaginations as well, forming a new normal, uh, especially for the finance team to be able to work remotely. So this is sort of like an exercise to build uh, sort of like the muscle capability for especially those who are uh, mostly working in the back end in the finance uh, to, to have that uh, remote working capabilities as well. And hopefully this is something that is going to be useful and scalable even after the pandemic ends. So in Zero, we work with across uh, two uh, different segments of the market. So first of all, we work with our accounting and bookkeeping uh, firms, those who are uh, providing accounting services as well directly with the SMEs uh, on the ground. So we kind of put a survey on what are their challenges, especially around now. So I've, I've heard a story from one of the partners that I used to work with uh, during this period when the lockdown was basically imposed across ASEAN countries. The partner have to spend more than hundred thousand US dollars just in getting laptops and making sure that all the staffs have access to internet and personal uh, laptop to work at home. So it is a very costly exercise for some of the business who are not ready to be forced to go into virtual essentially overnight. So it's definitely causing a lot of disruptions. Uh, not only for the storefront, like you know, the food, the retailers that you, you most often see, but I think for service providers, uh, it is actually effect, uh, impacting them a big time, especially on the cost front. And uh, as Joao mentioned as well, I think data entry, extraction, and storage is basically some of the problem that is quite simple enough, uh, but it's still there because uh, we've always uh, kind of like taken paper. We've always been too comfortable with paper and uh, the, the, the saying is like, what's not broken, uh, don't fix it, right? Uh, but I think this sort of like period kind of exposes us that there is actually a need to really digitize and think about how we can solve the uh, paper problem. And lastly, uh, not everybody is ready for remote workflow. I think that's just really true. Uh, even for technology companies like us, uh, sometimes we need to also adopt uh, uh, especially in this new working environment as well. So I think it's really important as a business owner, as an SME for you to think about how can you facilitate. So with this webinar, hopefully we can give you an example of some of the tools and capability that we could potentially use uh, to adopt in your business as well. <clears throat> so for the SMEs itself, I think the problem is more about staying operational, especially managing the short term cash flow in order to stay afloat. And I think you could, uh, I'm pretty sure there's uh, a lot of webinars out there as well that promote sort of like, how can you move your business online? How can you have like an online storefront? How can you 
pivot towards sort of like e-commerce sites. So I think there's a lot of like really insightful resources out there that you can find about how do you stay operational, especially in this challenging time. So when presented upon these challenges, some of the reactions, some of the measures that uh, this business has taken have been sort of like, uh, there's, so there's various measures that they, they like to undertake. So I think the easiest, the most immediate will be to sort of like downsize, freezing, uh, reduce, uh, uh, reduce sort of like wages or freezing of new, new hires. Uh, I think some of this may be important to save the business, to make sure it stays afloat, but that's not all the measures that we can take. We can all, of course try to reduce overheads, uh, look for other cheaper material, uh, or source materials if you're in a production business. Or most importantly, I think we could all afford to raise some productivity, especially now that we are confined at our home. We have some uh, space to actually think about how can we be creative about increasing productivity in this uh, difficult time. So when I thought about raising productivity, what came to mind first is basically how can we facilitate, how can like software like Zero and Just Login facilitate data automation? So in my opinion, data automation is uh, trying to facilitate the data flow from the source document, let's say from the bank, the invoices from the customers, or the, uh, the data from whatever software that you're using accurately into your uh, profit and loss or your accounting software. So, have a think about your current process, like right now when you're dealing with your customers, when you're dealing with the suppliers, like how do you actually exchange the information at the moment? Do you currently send a lot of information by emails, the bills and the invoices, or do you still actually result in like physical uh, invoices? Uh, or do you actually really like going old school, keeping all the receipts in your wallets and then at the end of the month, you kind of just ship it all to your accountant, make sure that they do it and they enter it into the system. So it's, it's a simple problem that you can easily uh, solve. And this is basically uh, em emphasizing the need for business to evolve. Uh, before, before this uh, uh, pandemic, I, I, I always sort of like discuss with my colleagues as well about the, the applicability of this uh, uh, business uh, model innovations. So we are kind of at the inflection point right now in the medium term where we can really see that the physical and paper business that rely on physical presence are starting to get a hit in this. Well, I think the business in general are uh, badly affected, but at least those who are in the digital space, those who have the digital capability are actually able to weather the change or uh, also uh, sort of like thrive in these conditions also in terms of operating uh, digitally and remotely as well. So I think this is sort of like a good time for us to really consider uh, and look back and evaluate on our processes. So this is what I know uh, when I speak to many of the accountants out there who are dealing uh, with their informations. Uh, a lot of the bottleneck actually come in the person there because all of the data from the bank, from the supplier and the customers, all of the receipts, all of the payroll information is basically uh, dependent on this one person to be on premise, to enter it into whatever software, if it's a desktop software or Excel, uh, and then uh, for, for the accountant to actually reconcile and produce the financial reports. So you can see that the potential bottleneck is in person and person is human. Human can actually make mistakes sometimes as well. So what we want to basically revamp is trying to bring the, the data source closer to the recording system itself, in this case, zero. So how can we facilitate the data transfer, the data flow from, let's say, your bank statements or from your suppliers or from your uh, payroll software or from other software that you are using to flow securely into that base uh, reporting uh, accounting, accounting software that you can then use to generate the financial reports and then you can actually see it. So for the first part, uh, I think as uh, Johan mentioned before, like we have a system product in HubDoc. So this is actually one of the newest addition uh, into our family uh, product. And the good things about, uh, the good news for the current zero users that are currently using our product, that this has actually come 
with the zero subscription itself. There's no additional cost involved in using the Hub product. And the workflow goes something like this. You can use any sort of like devices. You can use your mobile phone. Uh, you can use the email forwarding. And you can also use some sort of like a scanner if you have any scanner at home or if you have a portable scanner, you can actually hook it up into HubDoc or into Zero directly where all of the data, all of the receipts that's being scanned is being uh, extracted, the data uh, being stored as well. So uh, part of the uh, HubDoc functionality is to manage uh, sort of like the file sorting. So you don't have to create a separate file per supplier. It is automatically created. Uh, when you upload all of those document and there is a function also to push that data you can uh, you can look into the data review it or you can create a rule to auto publish that into your accounting system where it is going to be reconciled and it's going to be uh, matched with your other records let's say your bank statements so this is one of the scanner that we showcase in our roadshow you don't have to use this scanner but this is one of the scanners that can scan multiple uh, paper documents. It doesn't have to be an A4. So it's really, really neat. But any scanners would actually work uh, with HubDoc, with Zero. So you can upload from your computer or you can actually upload it from, uh, fr from email as well. You can set an email forwarding. And some of the data will be extracted. And as you can see on the side, uh, under the, 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 the folder, the, the supplier folder is actually created so you can easily search all of those receipts that you've scanned uh, before. So these are some of the important uh, data that HubDoc actually extract from your, uh, from your receipts. So it is uh, using the AI powered technologies. So it is actually getting smarter. The more it actually sees a similar looking invoices or bills, the more accurate it's going to be. So at the start, you may need to sort of like look and review make sure that the data captured is correct. But as you use it more and more, uh, the speed of processing will be a lot faster as well. So uh, there is there's more uh, in-depth training and webinar on this as well, which you can find on the website if you're interested. And another part on like enabling SMEs to, to be able to stay operational is basically through our invoicing and quotation online. So we have an online invoicing uh, module that you can use within the system where you can issue email directly to your customers, all of the bills and invoice. You can even attach a QR code for payment. And we have integration with the likes of Stripe, with the likes of PayPal, uh, that uh, allows you as a small business to actually receive money uh, through credit card as well. And I think if you are in Singapore, uh, the government has recently uh, uh, sort of like pushing hard of this e-invoicing uh, initiative. So zero is basically e-invoicing ready. We are Pebble ready. So uh, what what uh, for those of you who are uh, quite new in e-invoicing and how is it different from basically sending your PDF uh, uh, invoice through email is that this is basically a standardized system that is adopted by many countries, many European countries, and also Singapore. Uh, in terms of like facilitating data transfer, invoice transfer between accounting system. So right now, for example, I'm using Zero, and uh, my uh, my other company, my other counterparts are using something else. But both of us are actually on this e-invoicing Apple network. What it does, it basically it allows me sending the invoice directly to their accounting system, whatever that is, as long as it is registered with the e-invoicing and you can actually process that directly in the system. So there is no data entry involved. Uh, so this is also one step away in facilitating the data transfer between company. So currently in Zero, we have what we call the zero to zero network. So if I'm using zero, Chohao is using zero. When I send the invoice to Chohao, uh, the accounting system, the zero, the zero uh, his zero account will be able to capture that uh, invoice directly and process as a bill, as an expenses, draft expenses directly in the system. So this is basically expanding the network to cover everybody that has registered under this e-invoicing. So do check it out. We have a webinar on this as well. Cool. And so we are big on like uh, helping business improve their cash flow. 
uh, one of the challenges of operating businesses is basically collecting the payments uh, because uh, people like to spend, but they don't like to actually pay their bill so fast. So in zero, you can actually connect it up with the likes of PayPal, with the likes of Stripe, so that you can actually get the online payment uh, directly. So yeah, so this is one of the workflow you can enable at Stripe. You can even uh, on chart some of the charges into the customers as well, if you wish. Yeah, so this is some of like a, a, a survey that we did as well from our global uh, database. For those customers who are not connected to any payment gateway, uh, it is actually taking them about 25 days to actually collect the, the invoices and the proceeds. But if you, if you have any uh, a payment gateway, it will dramatically decrease that collection efforts and collection time as well. And part of the reason, uh, one of the things that we want to help enable, make, make the life of uh, SME owners a little bit easier is also this uh, cash flow dashboard, as well as the invoice reminders uh, within the system itself. Nobody likes chasing invoices, but we can actually have some automation process behind it, let the system actually send the automated reminders to your customers who are a little bit cheeky in terms of their, their payment. Uh, so, and you can always customize the message as well uh, to make sure that uh, uh, that the right message is sent for the right people. Cool. So that's that's more on the uh, on the on the operational front on how you, uh, on how Zero support the invoicing, the e the latest e invoicing compliance uh, by the Singapore government as well. We have. Uh, mobile capabilities as well. If you are, if you prefer to send your bills or invoices uh, through WhatsApp, there is an option to do that from the mobile phone as well. You can uh, post everything through WhatsApp too. So that's convenient. Right. So we touch on the supplier and the customer bits, and the other part is basically on the bank sets as well. So this is one of the features that Zero like to rave about basically on the bank feeds and the bank reconciliations method. So what it does, it basically helps to import some of the uh, transaction that is already happening in your business bank account uh, to directly to the system through a secure network. So when that transaction came through, you as the accountant or the business owners will be able to match, reconcile, or even record those transactions into the system itself, right? So these are some of the supported banks that are currently available in Singapore, Malaysia, and Hong Kong. So our team is continuously working to add more and more banks into this. So it's going to be work in progress, but we look to improve and get more banks on board to our platform as well. So basically, zero, I like to think of it uh, as my iPhone. Uh, because while we do accounting, we focus on accounting, we want to do accounting really well, but we can't do everything by ourselves. We rely a lot on our uh, ecosystem partners. So we have, uh, similar to your iPhone that has a lot of like personalized application that is relevant to you, uh, in Zero ecosystem, you can actually build something similar as well uh, with Zero at the centerpiece of it. Uh, for you to get, collect all the data, you can collect uh, connect just login, you can connect all your reporting tool, you can connect your point of sale solutions or your practice management solutions uh, directly uh, and push all of those relevant data into the accounting functions. So this is the vision that we have and that's why we are investing a lot into our ecosystem partnerships. Uh, we have 800 applications, public applications that you can start using right now and we are continuing uh, improving this and adding more local partners into our rosters as well. So this is the vision that uh, customers, you as a customers, you should be able to have a choice in terms of like, how do you run the business? What kind of tools do you want to uh, use to run the business? And yeah, there are some suggestions as well, especially this uh, in this period, I, I highly suggest that you go to the website and check out this cash flow app advisory playbook, what kind of uh, uh, application that could be useful as well to help you uh, maintain a healthy cash flow in the situations. Uh, some of our suggestions as well included. 
Uh, lastly, I would just want to uh, close off on why cloud is the way to go uh, right now in this situation and also in the futures. Uh, first of all, it enables operations for SMEs uh, in, uh, for you to be able to continue to work remotely, for you to continue to have some uh, online presence to be able to, uh, to, to operate. It increases the efficiency that goes without saying in terms of uh, connect, uh, have all of these connected applications together. And it is something that is scalable uh, even post-pandemic time, right? This is something that is going to be beneficial for you in the long run, not just like a temporary uh, a measure. So, yeah, so we are here to help. Uh, so if you need more help, more guidance on government support, uh, you can also go to this business continuity hub uh, on the zero page. Uh, you can look it up on the internet where we have lots of uh, resources that you can use uh, to potentially guide you through to this time. But yeah, so that's it for me. Thank you so much, Just Login, for uh, having me. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask it out. Uh, and if, uh, if there are answer, uh, questions that I can't answer, I'll get back to you in a, a separately as well. All right, over to you, uh, Johao and Iting. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, Chris, for... Thank you, Chris. I want to make sure that if... Yep, okay. Thank you for, for um, sh oops, sharing with us these uh, your insights and um, some quick demos of Zero itself. I hope uh, the finance team that is, has really looked at Zero before, I think, uh, I, we're very happy to be working in Zero. They're one of the most advanced uh, cloud accounting software out in the market. Um, so yeah. So with this, I, I think we'll, we'll we'll talk about. Let me try to see if I can have next slide. We'd like to do another random a poll to the team. Um, are you interested to find out more about just login and or Zero? Um, do leave your sample there so that we get a sense of um, everyone's, how we can help everyone in the webinar today. And next we will go to uh, Q&A very, very shortly. So if you have any questions, while well, everyone's filling out this poll, those have done, if any questions, please uh, feel free to, there's a, there's a little um, button there you can do for Q&A. Do click on it. You can start asking some questions. We'll try the best ability to answer them uh, right now. So there's, a, there's another section here for Q&A. So post your questions on Q&A and not the chat. Uh, we'll be looking at the Q&A very, very shortly. Okay, so so just before we go into the Q&A, I um, just would like to share, we'll be doing one more webinar next week uh, for employee engagement strategies for remote workforce, right? So employee engagement is um, one of the challenges, especially now everyone's working remotely. So how do you engage everyone? You know, how do you can Zoom meetings or Zoom beer sessions or whatever, right? So just to make things a little bit uh, more interesting and make everybody more engaged. So we have a webinar. Um, our own finance manager, Jeremy, will be sharing along with uh, the founder and CEO of Engage Rocket as well as at Deco. So please feel free to join us for next week's webinar. Okay, um, with this, I think maybe Christian, Chris can help me out a little bit. We'll, we'll go through some of the questions. Some of you may be just looking specific, others may be Christian, Chris specific, but we'll just go through them. Well, first question that we see is, uh, which submission of text, which other countries do you have a function for this? Um, we currently only support Singapore because Singapore has, uh, has the right uh, the APIs for us to do that. Um, if I'm where some of the countries that we operate in do not have that. Right now, we only have versions for Myanmar, Hong Kong, so I don't think these companies will, will be looking at once these uh, governments open up, we'll definitely 
uh, integrate into them. Uh, the other one is for Chris, uh, regarding yeah. a gentleman in the Philippines <clears throat> who's using zero. Yeah. Yeah, correct. So uh, the the question is that uh, so we, uh, how is the uh, Philippines uh, a zero zero compliance level in the Philippines uh, with regards to the registration with the uh, the Bureau of the Internal Revenue because they have a certain standard uh, in terms of uh, availing it. So so to answer that, basically, in uh, we have actually submitted our uh, applications for the uh, uh, BIR registrations. And in fact, it has been approved on the uh, uh, the company level. So I think Cyrus, I think if you if you want, uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll, you can reach out to me. I'll be able to help you uh, get the documentations uh, required for you to be able to register with the authorities in the Philippines. Okay. Um, the other question we have is. Uh, cost analysis. Uh, only one basic pay one actual hours for cost analysis in zero will actually require the necessary cost to be, sorry, one basic one actual cost. Okay, so um, for this, what we'll do is that N we will have to. Um, I think your use case is a bit uh, more relevant to your team. We have to understand a bit more about the setup and scenario before we can give you a proper answer on that. We'll probably take it offline and we'll team, our team will get back to you on this separately. Um, will the software be connected with the bank for making payment? Um, I'm not sure which one, which company you're referring to, but I'll answer for our answer for um, just login for us. We uh, right now support for payments for salaries is through bank files, but we are looking at integrating direct to banks. However, it's in the roadmap. Um, however, discussions in the development part. And for I think Christian. Yeah. So I think for Zero itself, uh, as we are an accounting software, we are not basically executing the transactions that you put in the system itself. So we are merely recording functions. So the, the data that we got from the bank is basically something that has happened, uh, but uh, we, are not, uh, we are not able to execute uh, the transaction from the accounting system itself. So that's the state right now, but uh, that might change in the future as we go into deeper partnership with some of the banks. Uh, but for now, no, yeah. Um, I think we have a question on hot dog. Is that? Yeah, um, correct. Yeah, so. so we have a question on how do we set up hot dog? So I think if you want to set up hot dog, it's quite easy. You can go to the central.zero.com uh, and the steps on activating it, uh, the step-by-step -step, step is actually there. So do, uh, do, uh, do reach out there to central.zero.com. Let me just type in. And then in terms of the, uh, so, uh, as mentioned before, the, the price is actually already included in zero subscription. So whatever you're already paying for zero, you're not gonna be paying extra for Hubdoc so long as you connect the two software together. So it's really important to activate the connection to zero, make sure it's connected to the zero account. So it's gonna be, uh, the, the fee is gonna be waived for you. Okay, so um, is, yep, this one, uh, next yeah. question is for Zero. yes. Yeah, so Zero is not the only supplier uh, uh, interfacing with Pebble because I think the, the idea of Pebble is that you get a buy-in for all of the, the major vendors to actually use this uh, secure network in order to facilitate the data flow from one system to another. Uh, but I think in Singapore, uh, uh, Zero is definitely one of the earlier uh, adopter to jump uh, on this and make sure that we are always compliant with the regulations. I think, yeah, Chris, you're very popular today. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so uh, thanks, thanks for supporting us for the past two years. So HubDoc is a relatively new addition. In fact, it's gone live in terms of like bundling 
only in March. So, so this is relatively new. So you still have access to it. You just need to activate it uh, from your backend, uh, and then you, you can you can start using it right now, basically. Okay, and um, I'm not sure if this is a question that uh, is relevant to you. Petty cash mm. claim. Petty cash claim. So this is something that. Uh, Probably more on the the workflow itself uh, for, for 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 you for the company. Um, yeah, but I think in 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 zero there is sort of like an assurance dashboard as well to make sure that there is no duplications. Uh, uh, so in the system, when you look at the assurance dashboard, you'll be able to see if there are duplicated transactions that is addressed to the same person or like. A, sort of like dispersed to the same bank account like we put a red flag in the system as well so hopefully that that helps to answer that okay um i will just kind of um go through the ones that's a bit more relevant um do we have a cloud-based employee handbook um Okay, a cloud-based employee, I understand what you're trying to get at here. Okay, we, know, we don't have this functionality, but I think this can be easily done with um, all the documents, uh, paper documents that you've done in place, like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, you know, things that they're cloud-based solutions that can do that. It's basically just a document, but we can, uh, yeah. And I think right now that's, I think that's more effectively that way, address it that way. We don't have that at the moment. I think um, I'll leave this one. I'll leave for this is a question from Kathy Ang uh, regarding number of vehicles, and you can do it at zero. So I have a number of vehicles that I would like to extract the expense report for each vehicles. So there is there is a, a tracking categories in zero that basically allows the business to segment uh, sort of like the reporting. Uh, it could be across a different business functions, uh, or in this case, you could actually across a different vehicles. Um, but in terms of uh, the the expense report, uh, it is something that I would have to to check again. Like you can definitely look at the PNL. Uh, for each tracking categories, but if you just want to look at the specific expense report, uh, we'll have to check in with you. Okay, um, one more by Crystal. I think one. Um, I'll say maybe one by. How easy is it to migrate data from MYOB to zero? Any consultant to assist? <laughs> yeah. So. It is, it, is, it is actually quite easy. It depends on how do you want to transition. It's the easiest way is of course to transition just the closing balance and then uh, starting from this date onward, you use zero from whatever accounting system. I think that's, that's quite easy. There's plenty of accountants, uh, any of consultants that can help you. You could actually go to uh, zero.com. You can look at fine and advisors. So depending where you are, if you're in Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Philippines, you can find those consultants that can help you migrate uh, from whatever system that you're using to, to, to zero. Uh, or you can, you can also do it yourself if you're confident uh, and if you are quite, quite solid with your accounting record also. Okay, um, what is take up rate for just logging in Singapore, especially SMEs? Um, it uh, depends on how, how you define take up rate. Uh, we have about 2,000 clients, and I would say most of them, I would say 90% of them belong to the SME category, 95% of them belong to the SME category. So I would say we're pretty popular um, for that matter. Okay. Um, I think there's one more. I think we'll have time for just one more, two more questions, all right. So 
for zero itself. Over to you, Christian. Okay. So if I were to set it up using my email as the Hubdoc account, will my other employees be able to use Hubdoc or do I need to use a standard email so that everyone can access? Okay, great question. So you can use your own unique email for every users in Zero as well as Hubdoc. So the thing with Zero and Hubdoc is that we don't charge for users. There is unlimited users. So I can use my own email, Chris uh, Zero. Uh, or to access Hubdoc, to access Zero, uh, and then Johal can use his own email to access Hubdoc and Zero. So each users you can uh, give them different access rights as well. So you can use unique email. You don't have to use one standardized email uh, for login. Okay. Um... I think we have the three more questions for zero. No, two more questions for zero, which is um, what kind of payment mode does zero accept? So credit card, so that's that's all we accept. So credit, debit card, uh, so it's purely online. So when you go to zero, basically go to the website, select your subscription plan, enter your credit card, you're good to go. And last one will be, do you set up the e-commerce as well? So we don't uh, set up the e-commerce. So as I mentioned in the, uh, at the beginning, uh, like we do have a couple of e-commerce partners uh, that helps to connect to the likes of Shopify and other commerce platform out there that connect the storefront. So I think this session we mainly cover on sort of like the back end part. So I think for this e-commerce uh, zero, we don't, uh, we don't, we don't uh, deal directly with the e-commerce, but uh, you can actually look at some of the partner solutions in our marketplace that, that enables that. <laughs> the question's <laughs> coming in. Um, uh, I know. To you. <laughs> um, yeah, in Zero we have an inventory, basic inventory module. Uh, it's a simple inventory module that is uh, good for like service, simple trading company, but I think if you are in manufacturing businesses or if you are in more complex inventory businesses, I think it's best to use our inventory partners that connects to us uh, so that it can account the cost of goods sold correctly. Um, yeah, so we have our basic inventory, but there is an upgrade version from our marketplace if you want some more. Okay. Fantastic. I think um, for those that we could not address on, uh, in terms of time, I, my colleagues have helped assist uh, answer some of the questions through text. So if you have posted questions, do check back that column for the answers you might have missed out. Um, for that, I think we have pretty much reached the end of today's webinar. Um, I would like to thank everyone for your participation and we'll look forward to seeing you in our other, other webinar series or maybe one day in, uh, in when person. this COVID situation <laughs> is over. Yeah. So thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, the audience. Um, uh, we'll hope you guys have a very good afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye.